this is beyond the pale. It's one thing to decide a book is not going to be, first of all, I think it's, it's whenever you hear that a book is going to be banned, great promotion for the book. You know, I immediately uh, will seek out anything Dr. Seuss or whatever, if they say it's going to get banned. Um, so, and they're banned for stupid reasons. This is beyond the pale. This is out and out rewriting the words of a beloved author who's, and also it's a great argument for used books. Uh, I, there's a great used bookstore in Pasadena for those listening that are local. It's called Book Alley. It's on Colorado Boulevard. Book Alley is a bookstore I've been going to for more than two decades. Is a great book, used bookstore. There's another great used bookstore downtown LA. Um, solicit and give money to used bookstores. You're gonna, we're all gonna have to buy media that's pre the year 2000 because that's when this stuff began to break. This is beyond, and there needs to be more people speaking up about this. Who's to say that someone like Stephen King is not going to be rewritten later? I mean, people have already tried to go after Stephen King for some uh, passages in in It, right? Uh, I think some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so uh, are they going to rewrite Stephen King after he passes away? Authors need to speak up. They probably won't have to for him. It, I don't know if he's a great example. But yeah, he but might what change I'm it himself. Is, but yeah. the, the dam is broken. The precedent's been set. You're allowing people to rewrite the words of great pieces of literature okay I, I, I so this is this is disgusting and the pr people responsible all of the people responsible at the company need to be shamed and fired and and that's where it's like i don't blame the people doing this they were taught to do this i don't blame the activists i blame the people in charge who don't have a backbone to stand up against the activists and this is the thing that's happening in the wga there are idiots there right now. And then the people in charge are allowing them to, to, to flourish. And it's, and so this is, this is all a matter of like, uh, I don't know if it's driven by weakness or guilt or whatever, but you're a lot, you're they're, they're allowing this to happen is just sickening to me. It's sickening. And uh, I, I don't even, where, where's the outrage, you know? Where's the outrage? It's only, only an alternative media like a place like this show where these things can be discussed. I think, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, Paul and Robert watch their videos um, about this topic. It, I can't believe it, especially when you compare the original well, and the new words. It's sick. And I can't so, say that you're, you're wrong to a point at all uh, because I'm going to go try and find it here real quick before you do leave. But if I don't, sorry, but. There was one of the articles when I was looking this up for this morning that basically uses this censorship as a win, claiming that the right has buckled. I'm trying to find the actual one here, but I, I don't understand yeah. that. I don't even. See, this is not. Look, be like it's a win for the left, basically. Like, like yeah, well, of course, won. it's a evil people oh, no, no, using no, no. it as a as a win for for themselves for the for no, their side is, of evil. Why is why is this, if this is not a political side issue. This is for, this is an issue for anyone that cares about censorship, free speech. That's not blue or red in, to me. Because that's it's why, because that's why, that's exactly it right there, Chris, because it's not, and they want to make it that so that we argue about it but amongst ourselves. That's why, because this is a unifying thing. This is something that we could all get behind. Most people would get behind. Like, even the leftiest of leftists would go, wow, come on, that's a 60, 70-year-old book. What the fuck are you doing that for? We understand, you know, this, that, and the other. You're, you're getting to the point where it's just minuscule things like the word fat, for fuck's sake. And I'm a fat kid, right? Augustus Gloop is fat. Deal with it. Like, yeah. <laughs> his I whole mean, sin is gluttony. I mean, that's the whole point of the story. Oh, no, but the thing is, the, the people involved doing this don't know or pay attention to that because they don't care. They don't do the work. They don't. It, it doesn't matter to them. It all, all that matters is for them to justify what their existence is. And the only way they can justify that is pointing out the uh, uh, pseudo flaws in things that aren't really flaws and saying we have to fix this and only we can do it. 
Yeah, and I'm sorry to intercut there, but uh, Mr. Chato, regrettably, have to have to leave us. But you did a great video on this uh, this uh, topic. Uh, anything you want to say uh, on it on your way out the door? I I think uh, Chris and everybody else has uh, basically covered it. We'll see how it uh, progresses. Uh, I think that this has gotten blown bigger than they anticipated. Uh, I, there is a monetary motivation for having for, for doing this. Obviously, they they get to replace all the books in all the libraries and in the United States and all the schools, whatever. And and so they get to make money on this. Uh, there is a certain uh, retaining of copyright uh, when you do something like this, because this is a copyright prevent prophylactic. Uh, this allows them I didn't to really extend, even think of that perspective. Yeah, this allows them to extend the copyright of all the books. Uh, the other thing that I noticed is I researched the um, the little shithole company and um, Penguin and, uh, Inclusive Minds, and they're like a yeah. tiny nonprofit uh, who seems to uh, espouse the 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 prevailing Hollywood notion that. Um, uh, 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 diversity means only uh, black and gay, like nothing else. There's no ethnicity. There's no other people. There's no Oriental. Nothing. So well, that kind of goes along with their thinking. Because what was it, Leslie Headland, who's basically was like, couldn't grab get her head around like, oh, you can't be racist if you're white. White isn't diverse. Is how she well, said it, or whatever, like something like that. Well, I mean, uh, so so you, know, you are racist if you are. Or you are racist you if are you're racist. white. That's what so, I mean. So yeah, the, so being having white people doesn't mean and, diversity and, and or it, something it like that. And it seems to yeah. me that uh, you know these are these companies are um, talking uh, and having lunch with tiny organizations like Inclusive Media, and they get talked up, and they go, "Oh, wouldn't this be a wonderful thing to do?" And then they, you know, this is their first big job, and and I, I think this got I, I think the backlash to this is far greater than they anticipated, and it's only going to get worse. Unfortunately, uh, the question is, will that backlash help or no, is it just about I don't think so. that's not going to do anything? I, I, I don't part of the problem is the role doll, uh, the organization, <laughs> according to the documents, are behind this also. Uh, yeah, because the the Irwell doll heirs, they're pretty useless. A lot of them, they're not going to do anything to preserve nope. the legacy of uh, uh, of the um, of the founder of the House of Doll. And, so, yeah. and and the irony is, if they had even mentioned this while he was alive, they would have been scared to death of him. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is if this is Norwegian. If this is in fact to circumvent the uh, the public domain aspect of the books, they're republishing the books with the the edits for a new copyright, but. I think because uh, and I know this from my publishing experience, I think that doesn't preclude the original works from still not becoming public domain. No, that that's correct. But they now have a new set of books that they can continue to sell and keep control of. Exactly. Which means that an independent publisher publisher could still publish the yeah. original versions without having to pay rights to the estate. So you, they're, they're not going to go away. Um no, there's, there's, yeah, but I see, I see the evils of what they're doing in that regard. But yes, um, no, I think it's more so with the last part that Paul said they, that that uh, uh, they seen a, a chance to virtue signal. They seen a chance to cash in on said virtue signal. Even if anybody in Roald Dahl's estate had any kind of uh, resistance to this, a, a check was cut in somebody's favor, or the numbers were shown of the last time they did something like this, or the last time when. Tim Burton's movie came out. How much? How many books they sold? And they're like, now's the time. It's, and it, yeah, yeah. But, and and really, the print you, you can tell. Uh, you know, we brought this up already. And again, I haven't read the books. Is that, uh, and you mentioned the example that I gave you, where uh, uh, Matilda is not reading Rudyard Kipling; she's reading uh, Jane Austen, which is. Uh, uh, and I didn't mention this in my video. Rudyard Kipling was a children's book writer. Plus, he was part. Uh, south asian so he was actually mixed race mm. writing children's books and now she's reading adult books by jane austen uh, and so it's and so you know to me it's the erasure of of men from the books there's a uh there's a uh a, i can't remember the 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 
reason they did it or, or where it comes from, but they changed the world word uh, someone is an idiot to they were a boy. So I guess the boy was an idiot. I mean, it, it, they are so politically um, uh, interested in changing not just the, uh, the you know the things that are, might be offensive, but it's the the hyper offensive. It's the what could be offensive in the future. Our school board here in Toronto uh, changed uh, their uh, chief financial officer, chief uh, uh, you know executive officer. Uh, they got rid of the word chief because it was offensive to the native community here or the indigenous community. And uh, one of the reporters asked them, so uh, so did you get complaints from the indigenous community about the word chief? No, no one complained. So they had, um, what did I call it? Precog wokeness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so not only are they, are, are they trying to change what's going on now, but they're precogging. They've got these woke people in pods filled with liquid with yeah. wires attached to them guessing what is going to be woke in the future it's just this is just thoroughly offensive yeah i agree and uh yeah it's it's sadly probably going to continue um maybe this is oh I, they're gonna go there's gonna be a lot of public bad publicity around this i'm really looking forward to seeing just what the final upshot yeah. is and we haven't heard from puffin yet we're going to get some kind of puffiny puff piece uh, you know, extolling the virtues of inclusive minds and their tiny shithole company that uh, really well, can't we know in the next for brains. We can almost at least uh, predict that the next edition, Charlie will then be a black trans woman who was raised by his single black mother and his four grandmas. That so that sounds... we know is definitely going to happen. So, and in the end, all that has been proven over and over is none of this new generation of wokesters have created anything of value, anything of interest, any new IP, nothing, zero, zilch. zilch. Yeah, it's all about <laughs> it's all about tearing down the old. Correct. And, like, look, and and well, I I just I, it's just so frustrating, and so I just don't know where where all this where all this is going to end. Yeah, where's it going? And and how's it going to end? Well, I think it's going to end with uh, a lot of companies suffering, uh, spiraling stock prices dropping, and it's going to end with people losing their jobs. I mean, this is where it's going to end. Until, until someone in middle management or in leadership grows a backbone and says, yeah, um, this is the way we've been doing it. This is how Hollywood has been making money. And this is what we're going to do. People like good looking people in movies. People like a sexy nebula. People like a shirtless Peter Quill with uh, the Chad bod. I'm sorry. It's the way it is. Deal with it. I'm sorry that, that you may feel intimidated by that. And that may hurt your feelings, but it's not about you. And the other thing that concerns yeah. me about this is by by making every character bland or taking any specific attributes away from oh. characters, you're you're not allowing the audience to identify with someone who isn't them. Look, I read I read plenty of Beverly Cleary books when I was a kid. Ramona the Pest being among oh, yeah. my favorites. You know, not all the characters were boys; they were young girls. I was able to identify. I was able to like um, relate to a character that didn't look like me. This is the lesson. Yeah. Uh, empathy. Except when you were in drag. Except when I was in drag. But what I'm saying is that uh, part of the lesson of all fiction, literature, comic books, movies, video games is, is you see yourself in someone who isn't you. And so these attributes are, are uh, it, it's it, attacking They're them. It's basically unifying. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't help any. It's just so such stupid decision making by people, you know, who think they're doing a good thing and think they're doing a nice thing. And well, I mean, you, you take the example where if you got a, a racist neighborhood and uh, you, you grow up learning about that one uh, certain word, which we won't use, mm -hmm. um, and it it gets into your system one way. My son. After he read Tom Sawyer, thought, oh, Huckleberry Finn is just a continuation of it. It rocked him to his core. That book taught him what that word meant. Yeah. And he would never use it in his life. 
Uh, and so people complain. They All they see is the use of the word. They don't understand the context of the book and how powerful it is. And, and uh, you know, I dare uh, most kids these days to, to read it because they won't be able to. It is well, a very kind of difficult book to read. Parallel that with the modern day and how they go after Tarantino when he uses it. It's like, no, you're not looking at the context. And when yeah. It, like, but that that is but that is Tarantino is not a children's exactly yeah there's a differentiation there that's true and that was a very powerful (laughs) powerful moment in in his uh, in his life and his learning and and he learned what that word meant in the right way I would suggest to you as opposed from a bunch of racist relatives and um, yeah I I I have no idea where this is uh, going I'd like it to end. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of ending, I know both of you have to leave, and yeah. we certainly have Chris on yeah. overtime. But yeah. Alps, yes, let's, thank you, Chris. Chris thank why, you. why are you acting like erasing history? It's a new thing. The concept of erasing history has been around for centuries. It's a paradox that keeps repeating. It says oh, for ten dollars. So thank you. Alex. Well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, 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 I you know. My point wasn't wasn't that that hasn't happened before. My point is I haven't noticed it so in such an overt way in my lifetime. So it's just very very bizarre. So uh, you know I don't know I don't know. Uh, but thank you, gentlemen. I was able to stay on longer because I kind of took a phone call there and disappeared for like ten minutes. So thank you for that. No, I appreciate will, it, man. Oh, thank I'll you. See. We love having you here and Mr. Uh, Doctor as well. So everyone. Make sure to check out uh, both the uh, film threat and to uh, call me chat. The link for both is, of course, in the description. And uh, especially check out um, film threat uh, streams on Wednesday, which uh, you really cannot miss. Anything else you want to add to that, uh, Chris? Yeah, we're uh, we're closing in on sixty nine thousand subs. Wow! You are not subscribed to the film threat YouTube channel. I know there's a couple thousand people watching. Please subscribe to Film Thread. Get us to sixty nine thousand. Uh, uh, my my partner there, Alan Ng, will very much appreciate it. You very much appreciate it. And congratulations, Chato. Are you you're a hundred thousand now, or you're close? Oh, no, I'm about twenty five hundred away. And uh, please uh, give me your subscribers first before you give them to Film. <laughs> please, <laughs> you can subscribe to both. There's no need to choose. There's no need to choose. There's I, only so many subscriptions to go around, I, Chris. Don't I get need, hasty. I no, need I'm just to get there before Film Threat. That's all I have. And-